Hi, I'm not sure if I lead a sad life or not. I've um, literally just got off the plane and I've been thinking about this all the time that I was in the States. So I got up, <laughs> off the plane, rushed to the lab to do this simple experiment because I'm, again, quite excited by this. Now, a friend of mine gave me the heads up on this and it was to do with structured water. And what I spent the time in the US thinking about was how I could utilize that structured water to get some power out of there. And to be honest, I'm going to show you the demonstration and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about structured water, but I think I've succeeded. Now, you've seen this one before. This is the uh, magnetically dried ink. So I put the piece of plastic on this, I put a splodge of ink on it, I let it dry naturally while it's still in place, and it lines up with the magnetic fields. Now on this one, what I've used for dem demonstration is two strips of copper, you can see them there. I used two strips of co copper so there'd be no galvanic reaction at all, but it couldn't be explained with a galvanic reaction. So we've got two strips of copper, then we've got our swag ink, which remember is just a carbon ink, and then it's dried on there so that the lines form. Now in here, what I've got is distilled water. It's got nothing in it. Actually, it's deionized water. It's this stuff. So I put some deionized water in there, made up with um, plastic sheet, and the plastic sheets I use these. These are just uh, overhead transparencies for laser jets. They're PET. There's nothing on them. Now I pop that in there, and I've got the meter hunt here, incidentally, and it's uh, reading microamps, incidentally. And just connect that up. And leave that to settle down. Now we're getting two microamps there. And as that settles down a little bit, that will actually creep up to around about five microamps. And you can see it's going up a little bit. And there's a reason for that that we'll go through later. Those are the two copper strips. Now I made this in a rush, obviously, so I'm not particularly pleased with the actual structure of it, but I'm making another one to give it a better go. But I thought, okay, so what is happening there? Obviously there's some kind of power flowing. I'm not quite sure where it's going, and probably because of two copper strips, it's not quite sure where it's going. So I dug out the one where I used the aluminium and the copper, this way to give it a bit of directionality because of the work function. Now we've clipped that up, Pop it in the deionized water. Look at that. 6.5 microamps, and that'll climb up. Again, we'll talk in a minute about why that'll climb up. But this thing, it's carbon, current collectors, and distilled water is generating current. That's got to be really, really interesting to anybody. It's certainly interesting to me. Let me swap it onto the voltage reading for you. There we go. Getting about 12.2 millivolts, and again, that will climb up. Now, obviously those voltage readings aren't anything to shake the earth about, but we're generating both current and voltage from nothing more than distilled water and carbon. That's really, really interesting. <laughs> so this next bit, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it under the microscope. Now, unfortunately my microscope doesn't have a um, microphone on it so I'm going to have to show you the microscope bit and talk a bit about it now. So what I've done is taken some deionized water and put a bit of methylene blue in it. The only reason I put methylene blue in is so you can see. Then I've taken this strip and I put a small piece of paper on it to make it a little angle like that and the angle points at two lines and you have to watch those lines relatively carefully but it's kind of cool to watch them because two things happen. One, the methylene blue is actually forced into the partition between the two lines of different types of ink. So those will go very much darker and the lines where it's been forced from will get very much lighter. And if you watch it really carefully, what you'll see is a flow. There's a definite direction of flow. So as you look along the edge of the lines of the ink, you'll see the uh, methylene blue particles being shoved along in a kind of continuous flow. Like I said, it takes a little bit of watching to see those things, but well worth it. So I'll put that up now.
So what did you think of that? Isn't that cool? Okay, so there's a little bit of time lapse required here because it doesn't do it immediately. But what I've got here is the um, copper and aluminium with the carbon ink, a lid of water in it, and you can see it's reading 0 0.21, 0 0.22. And what I'm going to do is plug the light in and then leave it for a while. So I've left that for a couple of minutes and you can see it's climbed up. Now, if I unplug it, it won't drop down. And there's a reason for that. And we'll talk about it. Incidentally, adding the methyl blue has quite an effect on it. You can see it's gone up to 11.1 .1, uh, microamps now. And I've added about one hundredth of a gram of methyl blue, probably less actually, to that. I've doubled the water and it's gone up from uh, 2 to uh, now 11.3. So it's obviously not just to do with the uh, twice the quantity of water. You'd expect a linear relationship there. It's gone up five times for adding one one hundredth of a gram of methyl blue to it. And that's really interesting too. Okay, let's have a little bit of talk about what's um, happening, or at least what's been theorized to be happening. Okay, so the main guy who's responsible for this is a guy called Gerald Pollock, and he calls it easy water. Uh, he stands for exclusion zone. So if you put those into Google, you'll find an awful lot of information about them. Now his idea is that water exists in a fourth state. So we all know about steam, water and ice being the three states of water. He says there exists a semi-crystalline state. So if you have a hydrophobic, uh, sorry, a hydrophobic surface, then what will happen is the water will form a helical crystal structure in there with some very unusual properties. The first property that it has is it forces all contaminants out. So salts and methyl blue get forced out of this EZ zone and what we get in here is pure water. Now the other thing about this water is it has a negative charge and outside there is a positive charge and that this is fired up by light. So adding light increases the size of the EZ zone or increases the amount of negative charge held in there. Now I looked at these videos and I thought that's really really interesting. It's really interesting for two reasons. One is it's a possible source of finding power and the other is because the EZ zone excludes contaminants it's a possible way of getting pure water. Now it occurred to me that in order to make that actually useful what we had to do was on the macro scale. So if you look at Pollock's experiments on the um, nano and micro scale, they're exceedingly impressive. And the question was, how can we convert that into macro? So of course it occurred to me that we've been doing this stuff with the magnetic alignment of the inks, that formed a hydrophilic hydrophobic surface in lines, would we be able to do something about this? And that's what I came rushing back to actually experiment with, is trying that to see if it actually generated a current within that structure means that we're able to access this easy zone in a macro scale way. Now, obviously it's all very from ready. We're only getting, actually uh, with the methyl blue, it climbed up to um, 30 microamps. So we're only getting about 30 microamps and a few uh, millivolts out of it. But very, very exciting for the possibilities it might be able to do with it. So it struck me that this easy water using aligned magnetic ink was a possible way of generating power and purifying water, a salt water, sea water, contaminated water, just with the aid of light. And that's what I'm going to be looking at. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you because I thought it was exceedingly exciting. And I hope you uh, enjoyed watching, and thank you very much.